Hello, and welcome to another episode. Uh, today, I'm going to cover the two basic moves in Japanese loop braiding. Um, and these are the two basic moves for uh, Japanese finger loop braiding. Uh, and they are called the open and closed moves. Um, they're called this way because when you do an open move, the, uh, the shanks of the loop, the top and bottom half, stay open. They do not cross over on each other. And a closed is called that way because the top and the bottom will swap places and it forms an X in the loop. So, so um, a little bit more on that crossing um, at, when we get to the closed moves. Um, so the open move um, starts with your operator finger and a lot of people like the pinky or the ring finger. Um, just depends on what you're more comfortable with and which one you may have a little bit more dexterity with. So uh, the way that it happens is we're going to take our operator finger and we're going to go through both loops to that la through that last one. And there's two ways to do this. Uh, this first way is you grab that top one and you're just going to kind of roll over and down and pull out so that you're trapping that loop. Let it off your index finger, pull it over, and then spread your hands. Now for short loops like this, spreading your hands is a good way to tension the parts of the braid to make it nice and tight and give you the pattern. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to walk the loops up. So we're going to take our now empty index finger and we're going to put it in the loop on the middle finger, grab it, pull the middle finger out, Put the middle finger in the ring finger, pull the ring finger out, and we would continue down that line of all the loops that are on our hand until they've all been moved up. So we're going to do that again. So we're going to take our operator finger and it's going to go through the loop, through the second loop, and then through that last loop. And then the second method is you're going to rotate your pinky down, or excuse me, your, your operator finger down Let's see if I can get a good angle on this and rotate it down. And you're going to kind of grab it from underneath like that so that you're trapping and pulling the thread out. Let it go. Spread our hands. And then we're going to walk our fingers back up. So I'm going to do that again. So when you're first learning to braid, it doesn't matter which way you do the move, whether you grab the top, the top shank or the bottom shank of that loop. Um, just do whatever is more comfortable or more, uh, or is easier for your fingers to manipulate. And so, um, as you get along, there are some subtle changes, but uh, you, those won't really come into effect unless you get into very specific, uh, complex braid patterns. So, um, so that is the open move and it kind of at speed, this is what it looks like. Oop, ha, ah, messed that one up. So, and if we keep doing that over and over and over again, what's going to happen is, I'm going to put these down. What's going to happen is, is that we end up creating what's called a pigtail braid. And that's what, what happens is that you're actually com completing two separate braids simultaneously. And so this would be like the top half of your loop and this would be the bottom half of your loop. So, and uh, in a bicolored uh, looping uh, by doing this over and over and over again, you'll have one loop that, or one braid that is one solid color and another braid that is another solid color. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick these back up now. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to the closed move. So the closed move starts very much like uh, the open move. So we're gonna put our operator finger through all of the loops, but not that last loop. So on this last loop, what we're going to do is we're going to actually reach 
over the top of that loop and we're going to grab our, our operator finger around it and catch it and we're going to pull it out make sure to let go of it spread our hands to put that tension in and as you can see what happened here is that by grabbing it from the outside we're actually twisting that that uh, that loop around and so as you can see uh, more easy or easier with the bicolored loops is that the uh, the black half is now on the bottom and the white half is now on the top and so again walk our fingers up so we're gonna do that and then through the loop through that next loop and then this is the second way to do that the uh, closed move and so we're gonna reach from underneath and put our, our operator finger into that loop. We're gonna kind of trap it, let go with their index finger, spread our hands, walk these threads up, and you can see that the white half of the loop is now on top and the black is on the bottom. So, and this is what it looks like at speed. Ah, did an open move there. Let's back that up. So, and just like with the open move, it doesn't matter which way you do it, you're still going to get the same effect. So, as you can see, as I go through here, that all of them are now exchanging positions. So, let's go ahead and put this down for the moment. And what happens when you do that is that you're actually bringing the top half of that loop down into the bottom and you're making this X. So let's see if we can, so you're making this X. So now all the, all the parts, the top part of that, of the loop is now on the bottom and you're getting this X formation here. And what that does is it brings the braid together and if we were to keep doing that over and over and over again we would end up with this square braid so like so so I'm gonna go ahead and pick these up and so there's a, a very easy simple um, uh, braid pattern that we can do from this, go ahead and reset. Um, typically Japanese braids start with an odd number on the left hand and an even number on the right hand. Um, and then they almost always start with the right hand grabbing a loop from the left hand. Um, and with every rule that is out there, there are some exceptions to this rule. Um, there are several braids where it's an even number of loops on both hands um, and occasionally there's a odd number on the right and an even on the left so uh, this next braid pattern uh, or this the the first braid pattern is a flat braid and really that's a combination of the open and closed moves over and over and over again and so uh, the first one uh, is called the two-step flat and so that's where we do an open move from the grabbing from the right or for, grabbing from the left to the right and then it's a closed move grabbing from the right to the left and we just repeat that open closed open closed open closed and so I'm going to put this down, show you real quick. What happens? So, and here is the flat braid. And uh, uh, so you can see there's like a little bit of a chevron pattern to it. Now occasionally, depending on how much tension you have, your braid may start out 
square okay and really what you have to do is kind of run your finger down that middle and separate the two halves and kind of massage the braid to make it to come flat and then the more complex uh, um, method to do this is the four step flat braid and that's where you perform three open moves in a row and then you close it off with a, uh, you finish it off with a closed move so it's open 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 closed open 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 closed and you just continue to repeat that over and over again um, now uh, sometimes you want a flat braid um, one of the neat things that you can do with the uh, the with the flat braid is that um, you can actually uh, manipulate the number of times you do an open and closed moves and you can actually create uh, built-in button loops um, unfortunately I don't have a, a braid available to show you but by performing maybe so many extra uh, open moves instead of just the the one or the three uh, whether you're doing the two or the four step and then you do say three however many extra open moves you do you do that many extra closed moves in between and then what happens is you'll have it closed flat and it'll come back it'll be flat still but you have now this space there and then it comes back closed again and you can repeat that as long as you need that piece of of, um, of trim uh, and you can really customize the size of those, uh, button openings to what you need um, so those are the two moves for today um, join me later for uh, the the an intermediate move called a uh, over twist and um, thanks for watching